Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 26th edition of the Coffee Microcaps Morning Meeting. My name is Mark Tobin. I'm the founder of Coffee Microcaps. Uh, for anybody who hasn't joined us in the past, uh, you're very welcome. And for all our regulars, uh, welcome back to the latest edition in the series. Uh, just for anybody who's joining us for the first time, the structured webinar is uh, it's a one hour webinar. We usually run them every fortnight. And uh, the breakdown is we get two companies in to present. They each have a 30 minute slot, which uh, splits up between a 20 minute presento and a 10 minute Q&A session at the end. Please, if you do have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box rather than the chat function. It just makes it easier to moderate the questions at the end. And um, please note the webinar is being recorded and will be posted on the Coffee Microcaps YouTube channel in due course. Um, so if a presenter flips over a particular slide too quickly, um, you know, you can go back and look ahead on the YouTube channel. Um, where to follow Coffee Microcaps, you can guess on Twitter, as I said, YouTube for the recording of this webinar and all our previous webinars, LinkedIn, where I do some additional long form content. And I also write a weekly paid subscription newsletter that can be accessed via the Coffee Microcaps Substack newsletter platform. And we'll get straight to James Quigley, our first presenter in just a second, who's coming to us from Dell Group, our first uh, IPO that we've had to, to present, or uh, pretty much an IPO, we'll say. And then we're going to have, I'm actually delighted to welcome back Mr. Andreas Creel, CEO of DMEM, who presented about six months ago, and Andreas is back to give us an update on everything that's, that's happened there. So without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and James is waiting in the wings. So he should be ready to go, James. Thank you, Mark. I'll just uh, share my screen now. Uh, um, yeah, it's coming up. And then just go to uh, slide share mode, James, just so we get it on full screen. Mm, uh, I can still see it out to the side. All right, there we go. Oh, there we go, perfect. Okay, you're ready to go, James. Thank you, Mark, and, and good morning, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity to present to you today. Uh, yeah, so James Quigley is my name. I'm a fund manager at 360 Capital. I uh, have had over about 25 years experience in the real estate industry and I'm very excited to be talking to you today about our new uh, integrated uh, debt business. So firstly, looking at the market opportunity, we're confident that the market opportunity for non-bank lenders and particularly in the commercial lending space is going to continue to grow. Uh, in 2017, the Reserve Bank of Australia estimated that approximately 12% of the commercial real estate debt market was uh, covered by non-bank lenders, which was about $32 billion. We believe that's on track to double in the next couple of years to 25% which in turn creates a $65 billion opportunity. Uh, we still think there's further growth opportunity beyond that. Uh, in Australia, approximately 6% of all credit is non-bank lenders uh, and only 4% in New Zealand. That compares with Europe, which is approximately 40% non-bank lenders and US 50% non-bank. So opportunity for continuing growth, um, which gives us confidence in, in what we're doing with Delt Group. Delt Group is an integrated commercial real estate debt business that will have three key income and earning streams. Firstly, on the left, an origination and brokerage business, which I'll go through in more detail shortly. It's a proprietary online digital brokerage business that's been established by the founders over the last few years. Uh, it will have a balance sheet, a trust that will provide earnings by providing uh, commercial real estate loans throughout Australia and New Zealand. Initially, that'll make up approximately 80 to 90% of earnings. And it will also uh, have a funds management arm that will manage third party commercial real estate loans on behalf of uh, external investors. All origination and management fees associated with that will stay within the group for the benefit of investors. We'll be targeting a 6% per annum uh, distribution paid monthly. This slide just looks at the key benefits for, for investors. Uh, technology enabled real estate lending 
real estate is probably one industry that's been uh, a bit slower to adapt than others, but we're catching up. And Dell, the Dell Online Marketplace platform that I'll go through shortly is the first of its kind in Australia, and we believe it's one of the first of its kind in, in the world. Um, we will in, invest using the, our experience over the last four years of investing in about $220 million of loans to establish a portfolio of well-secured loans in Australia and New Zealand metropolitan markets. markets. We'll be targeting that 6% per annum distribution paid monthly. Um, we're expecting the ramp up period to be three to six months to get the funds fully deployed, earning that income. One of the key highlights of 360 Capital Group being involved is our access to diversified funding sources. So for the balance sheet, for the trust side, we have signed a term sheet with a major European bank that will provide a warehouse facility that will effectively partner with the balance sheet uh, at a, and they have a very low cost of funding of circa 4%. So we'll be able to make a significant margin above that um, on the loans for that facility. 360 Capital and the founders of Dell, the online platform, will invest up to 19% as current investment capital. So it'll be strong alignment uh, and an ongoing alignment through, through that uh, mechanism. 360 Capital itself has a 15 year real estate track record. Uh, it's done over $3 billion worth of transactions across the capital stack. And a key benefit of that for investors in Dell Group is every loan we assess, we look with a real estate equity lens on. So looking at it on a you know, worst case scenario, what happens if we end up having to own that property or sell those remaining apartments? How would we go about it using a deep experience across the group from a real estate perspective? Uh, Del the Delt platform, uh, the, the online marketplace, I mentioned before, it's the first of its kind in Australia. So James Storey, head of real assets for 360 Group, has spent many hundreds of hours building this platform over the last couple of years. Uh, in simple terms, it enables borrowers to come online. They get asked a series of questions um, in, in simple language that everyone understands to enable a term sheet or funding sheet to be put together. That then gets distributed to our panel. We've currently got about 75 non-bank lenders on the panel. Prior to the lenders uh, coming on board the platform, uh, we vet them and they sign an agreement and they also indicate what type of loans they're looking to invest in. So once the term sheet's sent out, it will be a, a reduced number of lenders that specifically are interested in that type of loan. Um, the platform has online calculation engines, so it does enable a borrower to, to effectively agree to commercial terms with a lender all online. Um, we have not found any other a platform that does that. We've found you know, similar platforms that have form-based inquiry systems where someone ends up calling you and saying, let us help you work through that. So the, the, te the technology and the calculation engines and all the uh, systems put in place really improve efficiencies and cut down time for borrowers. Um, it also enables borrowers to assess funding proposals back from lenders on a like-for-like -like basis, taking away some of the opaqueness of, of this market. In terms of the track record for Delta itself, um, one of the 360 capital entities has, has done over $220 million of loans in the last four years, an average IR of 15%. We've seen over $10 billion worth of transactions. That has given us the confidence to build the Dell platform because we realised there was a lot of loans that weren't suitable for our lending criteria and our risk parameters, but we knew there'd be other lenders that would look at it. Um, hence, hence, we've established the Dell platform. This slide just looks at the different types of lending we will undertake. Um, primarily for the balance sheet itself, we'll look at senior secured loans, um, in the past, we've done development construction lending, residual stock loans, which are finished uh, apartments and townhouses where titles have issued, there's no delivery risk, and the developer is looking to finance out, uh, finance part of the remaining stock that has not sold yet. Um, in the past, we've also done uh, commercial investment loans and, and one mezzanine loan. But as I say, for the balance sheet, it would be primarily senior secured loans. Funds management, um, 360 has been a fund manager for the last 15 years. So we, we know exactly what we're doing there. 
And we also know that there will be loans that we come across through the Delp platform that we will bid on um, that, that will not be suited for the balance sheet. And in that regard, we have access to high net worth investors and um, other uh, sophisticated investors who are prepared to take on more risk for higher returns. So we'll look to establish some sin, sing, single loan syndicates and a cont contributory offering, which is effectively a, an offering whereby investors can choose which loans they invest in. They will not be uh, investing in a pooled uh, bundle of loans. They can go loan by loan if they wish. Helping us with the funds management side is a, a new agreement with PMG Funds Management. Another 360 capital entity has recently acquired 50% of PMG. Uh, PMG is a 30 year established uh, real estate equity fund manager in New Zealand with nearly $700 million uh, under management. They like what we've been doing in the debt space. They, they want to partner with us because of our IP in the debt space. So we'll look to learn, launch the first fund in New Zealand uh, with PMG by December this year. So just coming back to the DELT platform, Here's a sample of some of the lenders that have signed up, um, both a mixture of, you know, you can see offshore private equity groups there like Oak Tree, and then a lot of local um, lenders like Balmain, Fortius, um, et cetera. So we've, we've got a, a growing list of lenders, there's about 75 now, and we're getting new lenders on board every week. So they're all hungry for deals and are, are very excited about what we're doing with Delt. Um, there's also opportunities over time to expand the uh, offering offshore for Dell. Talos is a uh, software provider in the US that's helped build the platform. They acquired 10% of Dell, which will be vended into the Dell Group business at $4 million. They acquired that for $400,000. They will look to franchise or, or take a royalty stream to expand Dell into the US, which is a $4 trillion commercial real estate market compared to a $300 billion market in Australia. That's likely to happen over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, we'll also have established partnerships with groups that will help with lead generation for the Dell platform. In particular, developmentready.com.au is an online uh, development site, sales uh, agency, if you like, They've transacted over $5 billion worth of sites around the country in the last five years. They get 46,000 hits per month. Um, we will be their funding partner. So when people come on their site looking to buy properties and they want to get indicative terms for funding, they'll click through to Dell, uh, use our calculations engines, and we'll capture all the, those leads. So the value proposition, um, Initially, 80 to 90% of the earnings will come from lending activities from the balance sheet, um, and then five to 10% from origination and management. But we see those top two as being the growth engines over time. So that's what sort of really differentiates us from a mortgage REIT, in that we've got companies attached that will grow over time as we grow those businesses. Just quickly then through the offer details, um, we're raising uh, between 35 and $100 million. The balance sheet lending and investment management initiatives on the right there can be intertwined, if you like. Um, investment management initiatives could include the balance sheet providing seed capital for a new fund either in Australia or New Zealand. Uh, the $7 million acquisitions of platforms is $4 million for DELT, the online platform that's been built by the team here at 360 and $3 million for AMF Finance, which is the origination business that has been uh, sourcing all the loans for the last four years. Then on the offer metrics, we'll be raising at 50 cents per stapled security. Um, and as I said before, targeting three cents per annum distribution, which is a, a 6% per annum yield. 360 Capital will co-invest up to 16.1% and then plus 3% from the founders of Delt what gets to the 19%. And finally, the timetable, we kicked off the capital raise last week, getting very strong interest, uh, very good interest from, from family offices and, and uh, anyone that's associated with commercial real estate really likes uh, and understands what we're doing. The general offer will close on the 6th of May. So on that note, I'll uh, open up for questions. 
Cheers. Thanks, James. Just when you've got the yeah, the timetable there or whatever, can you just confirm uh, who the broker to the offer is? The broker to the offer is Shaw and Partners. Uh, okay. and there's there's no partner. other JLMs there uh, working no. on it exclusively. That's correct. But vested equities are, are below the line. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So if anybody wants to get in, in touch, um, the guys at Shaw's are the ones to contact. Um, okay, that's one question. The next question is, um, will 360 Capital be utilizing the platform for its own deals that may come along in the future? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, so 360, it made the strategic to de decision to split out its debt business from, from another vehicle. So all de debt activities will go through Delt Group. Uh, however, Three six, sorry, dealt balance sheet when bidding for deals will need to bid alongside the other lenders in the marketplace. So it will be a pure marketplace. Uh, there will be no advantage given to, to dealt as a lender to, to ensure that that works properly. And I think it was slide six or seven, the, the one with all the, um, the non-bank lenders. You say you've got about 50 odd signed up at the minute. Um, how many yeah. lenders do you think you know you can eventually get onto the platform and maybe just give uh, an overview of you know people want to know what the like minimum deal size is or maximum yeah. deal size is uh, you know where's the sweet spot do you think for the Dell platform? Absolutely. So I think um, in the answer to your first question, we currently have over seventy lenders on board. We estimate there's currently two hundred non-bank lenders in Australia. So we, you know, we can see ourselves going over a hundred, uh, and that includes family offices that are interested in providing loans, as well as these established, you know, businesses that, that are in the non-bank lending space. In terms of the deal size, the sweet spot is probably for, for the for the platform for the brokerage business, five hundred thousand to say twenty million dollars. It's often your smaller lenders, perhaps less sophisticated lenders. Um, you know, the, the big groups that are taking out $100 million loans generally have established relationships and they, they don't, won't need to go through DELT. But it's, it's where it's resonating is with, you know, maybe uh, developers that are looking to grow their business from building a couple of townhouses to, to bigger projects or smaller residential investors that are now expanding and, and looking to buy shops, offices, warehouse. That's where DELT really works well for these sort of groups. Um, another part of the target market there is, is, is residential mortgage brokers that are, perhaps don't have the skills or, or not used to dealing with commercial loans. The DELT platform can help them go through that process and give them access to all these lenders. And then another question just on the, on the, on the US partnership and the expansion into Asia. Um, in, in realistic terms, is that, you know, for both of Asia and the US, is that kind of a, a a twelve to twenty-four month horizon before you know that kind of kicks into any kind of gear at all? Yeah, that's correct. It it is. Um, so in terms of the first offshore expansion opportunity, um, it it is probably more likely the US because we have a partner there with Talos, being the software provider partner that has helped build the group. The potential capital coming from Asia. That's probably more um, investors and, and uh, that, that would look to either partner with a balance sheet or come on board as a lender rather than, um, you know, take the Dell platform into Asia. So, yeah, New Zealand and, and uh, the US and Canada, North America generally, are where we see the first offshore expansion potential opportunities. And... Yeah, COVID has held that back, the lack of the ability to travel. So, you know, we're hopeful that I, that will change over the next 12 to 24 months. Okay, great. I think we've kind of run through all the questions now, James. Um, if anybody, I don't think it was on one of your slides, but if anybody wants to get in touch with you directly uh, or perhaps the um, the other James James story. Uh, what's the the best contact uh, details for you? Uh, so it's probably for for me. Um, what would you like a, an email address? Yeah, email address would be great. James dot Quigley Q U I G L E Y at three six zero capital dot com dot au. 
or james.story, which is S-T-O-R-E-Y, at 360capital.com.au. Either of us would be happy to help with any questions. Okay, yeah, that's great. If, if anybody's got, I guess, any further um, questions uh, or wants to chat through in a bit more detail about DELT, and then, as you say, Sean Partners for anybody who, um, you know, wants to put their hand up to be uh, in the book for the offer. James, we're going to leave it there. Thank you very much. And um, we'll, uh, we'll await the trading of Delt Group in, uh, in early June. Terrific. Thanks, Matt. Cheers. Thanks, James. You. See you. Bye. Okay. Thanks, James. I think we're ready now for our second presenter. Yes, we are. Uh, I can see Andreas got his slides up ready to go. So, Andreas, we're, we're ready when you are. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so I presented uh, to the coffee micro microcaps audience uh, not too long ago in early October 2020. Um, so I don't want to give uh, a general introduction again to my company DMEM, uh, but I'm referring to a, a presentation which we've lodged on the 16th, 16th of March. Um, this is about an acquisition which we've announced on that date. Um, um, so my company DMEM, DMEM stands for Decentralized Membranes, just to recover briefly what we are doing. Um, with DMEM, we are in decentralized industrial water and wastewater treatment. Um, we have positioned our company as a one-stop shop supplier um, of decentralized industrial water and wastewater treatment solutions. Um, we will offer uh, membrane-based um, um, containerized uh, water treatment equipment. We've complemented that offering uh, with uh, pumps and hydraulics uh, with water treatment chemicals uh, to provide that true one-stop shop offering to industrial customers. Um, um, the, the key IP behind our company that's in our membrane technologies um, and I want to take that chance to actually uh, show you a picture how that looks like. So you should be able to see a, a picture of our membranes. Uh, this is what we are manufacturing in our facility in Singapore. Um, so we're looking at hollow fiber membranes. It's a porous, microporous structure. Uh, it's little straws, tiny straws um, with the porous walls. Water molecules pass into the inside, the interior of these straws. Contaminants uh, like solids, uh, bacteria, viruses, which are bigger than these pores, they get rejected. Uh, right, clean water, the clean water stream uh, from all kinds of contaminants. Uh, we manufacture many different types of these membranes, which vary by pore size, for example, in, in our plant in Singapore. Uh, we take bundles of these fibers and we basically stuff them inside these white tubes uh, that you can see on this very next picture here. Uh, the white tubes contain uh, thousands of these tiny little fibers. Um, uh, they are called membrane modules, um, and they form the heart, the key filter of our containerized water and wastewater treatment systems. Um, um, that's the technology side. And then lastly, what we offer to the client is uh, this, uh, what you see here on the, the next picture. Uh, it's a complete solution. It's a turnkey uh, containerized water or wastewater treatment system. Um, and in this particular case uh, that you see here in, in front of you, uh, we've deployed these two containers actually owned by DMEM. Uh, this is our own asset on our own balance sheet uh, in front of the client's facility in Singapore. The client is a large multinational from the food and beverage industry. Um, and uh, so here we not only will sell the equipment to the customer, we actually lease it out to the customer under a long-term agreement. Uh, and in addition, we provide an, an uh, operations and maintenance service to the client uh, who gets a uh, hassle-free service against paying us a recurring fee under a very stable and long-term 
build on operate agreement. So I'm moving back to the presentation now. That gives you a little bit more a visualization of our technologies, but also of our business model, uh, which actually goes, uh, takes us directly to the end customer. Um, we have a very strong presence in Australia. We have a very strong market share in, in Queensland, um, also in Tasmania. Uh, we've got offices in um, Melbourne and in, in Adelaide in South Australia. Uh, and obviously by the acquisition about which I'm uh, going to talk in a bit more detail uh, in just a few minutes, uh, we've completed that national footprint in Australia by expanding into Perth and Western Australia. We got global operations uh, through subsidiaries in Singapore and Germany. Uh, in terms of customers, uh, we got, uh, as I mentioned, a very strong focus on industrial customers, in particular around mining and resources customer. Customers, uh, we got uh, service agreements, uh, long-standing agreements, for example, with companies like Rio Tinto. Uh, so global multinationals, market leaders in their, um, in their relevant space. Um, um, we got uh, uh, good customers from the infrastructure side, uh, from industry. Uh, a bit more recently, um, for those of you we've, which have followed our company over the last few months, uh, you may have read that in the news. Uh, we've expanded uh, into new industrial segments, like uh, in particular the food and beverage and agricultural sector. Uh, we're working with uh, global leaders like Shivadan, uh, which is a customer, uh, Shivadan being the, uh, the global leader in flavors and fragrances, some from the food and beverage sector. Uh, and a bit more recently, we've actually announced uh, the first two projects with customers from the power and electricity generation sector. Um, uh, what's common to all these different uh, customers and, and sectors is that they require very high quality treated water. Um, so they require water that's free from tiniest impur impurities. Uh, and that's exactly, and you've seen the pictures uh, just a couple of minutes ago, that's exactly what we are addressing with our sweet spot. Um, our membrane technologies uh, provide uh, high quality treated water. It's a high value add technology. Um, and uh, so um, across all these sectors, uh, it comes back to, uh, um, well, our um, technology that we can address uh, these high-end customer requirements. So includes uh, a very strong performance by two recent acquisitions, which we made during the year 2019. Uh, this includes the acquisition of a smaller company called PumpTech, which is on the pumps and hydraulic side. Uh, based in Tasmania, which brought a great customer base uh, among Tasmanian uh, food and beverage and agricultural customers in particular into DMEM. Uh, this entity, uh, it grew by about 67% uh, in terms of cash receipts top line growth uh, under DMEM ownership. Um, um, and the second acquisition, which took, uh, took us into Germany and, and Europe, uh, a company called Geotech, which supplies water treatment chemicals, uh, also showed pretty decent uh, revenue top line growth by about 18% uh, compared to the past. Um, um, and this company also complements this one-stop shop offering of equipment plus pumps plus chemicals uh, as Geotech is, uh, is in the uh, specialty chemicals uh, for water treatment applications segment. Uh, on a like-for-like -like basis, I sometimes uh, get asked that, that question as we integrated these two companies into uh, DMEM Group in 2019. But on a like-for-like -like basis, uh, comparing the second half of 2020 to the second half of 2019, uh, where basically those two companies were almost in full consolidated into DMEM Group results. Uh, we saw a revenue or cash receipts growth of about 35%. Now, so on an organic basis, uh, we've achieved about 35% in, in cash receipts growth, um, which obviously gives us a very strong momentum uh, also into the new year 2021. 
Uh, lastly, when summarizing the, the uh, results and financial well, events during calendar year 2020, uh, obviously we saw a very strong performance towards the end of the year, um, relating, referring to the chart uh, in the, the middle now, uh, the, the bottom of that slide here. Um, so we achieved the, uh, the first quarter uh, where the company as a whole um, uh, got, uh, got to uh, operating cash flow break even. Uh, we came in with about $540,000 uh, positive operating cash flow, uh, which comes back to uh, that top line growth momentum that, that I just described. Um, looking forward into calendar year 2021, uh, we expect the top line growth to continue. Um, so we um, we start the year with a visible balance of about $14 million uh, in, in cash receipts. Uh, that breaks down into about $10 million uh, from recurring revenue segments, which uh, comes back to the sale of consumables, uh, to that one-stop shop uh, product offering uh, to our industrial customers. Uh, this includes service contracts. It includes built-on operate contracts where we lease out the equipment to, to clients. Uh, it also includes uh, well sales of consumables, pumps, water treatment chem chemicals, uh, which are typically very, very stable and recurring. Um, so this is a, a strong base. Uh, and the, the percentage uh, of our recurring revenue segments compared to the total revenues that's grown steadily over the years to about 58% uh, in calendar year 2020. So this uh, 10 million, uh, this is uh, obviously an, an amount which we will uh, carry forward uh, as a solid base into the new year. Uh, and we are also starting the year um, as of today with about 4 million in contracted business uh, for the sale and supply of water treatment equipment, uh, which is our projects business, uh, which by nature creates a little bit of cyclicality uh, in, in our uh, business. Uh, but nevertheless, we're starting the year with a very healthy uh, contracted uh, balance of, of orders. Um, and that explains uh, the 14 million in, in cash receipts, which are visible for this calendar year 2020 as of March, uh, as of uh, 1st of April, as of today already, uh, which is why uh, we have communicated to the ASX that we expect significant growth uh, for this calendar year. Before I come to the acquisition, uh, just a couple of words on the, the market. So we're operating in a very large market. Um, I think that's, that's not a secret that water treatment uh, has this, that there is high demand for advanced water treatment systems. Um, we, uh, we see the global market for decentralized water treatment systems for containerized modular packaged solutions uh, at about 21 billion based on uh, market research on third party market research. Uh, for Australia, we, we um, estimate the immediately addressable market for DMEM at about 300 million Australian dollars. Um, um, this is complemented by secondary opportunities, market opportunities for DMEM, which include, uh, for example, the sale of pumps and hydraulic equipment, uh, also the, uh, the sale of water treatment chemicals as part of our one-stop shop offering into our customer base, um, uh, which add uh, uh, substantial opportunities in dollars uh, on top of this uh, $300 million market volume. Moving ahead now to the, the well, recent events, which we've um, obviously announced to the ASX. Um, um, so as part of our expansion plan and roadmap for 2021, uh, we made clear to the market that, uh, well, there is a, a strong uh, focus at this stage uh, on building a national champion in Australia, um, national champion for good quality, uh, advanced uh, industrial water and wastewater treatment. Um, there is a big opportunity in Australia because uh, it's very fragmented competition with a lot of smaller players, regional players still dominating this market. Um, uh, so there is a big opportunity to consolidate that market, to build a national market leader. Um, that's where, where we uh, have positioned the company. Uh, we 
prior to the acquisition, we had a strong base uh, on the eastern coast of Australia, um, obviously with uh, Queensland and Tasmania, where we have workshops uh, with uh, sales offices in Melbourne and, and Adelaide. Um, a little bit of black spot on, on the uh, map was Western Australia, while we had done occasional projects in that region. Um, we now announced the acquisition of a company called Capic, uh, based in Perth. Very strong customer base, client base, in particular among the Western Australia mining and resources sector. Long-term and repeat customers of Capic include the likes of BHP Billiton, Northern Star, Eluca Resources, um, large players from the mining and resources sector, uh, which obviously complement extremely well uh, with the positioning of DMEM on the East Coast. We've worked with the same or similar customers in Queensland, customers like BHP we've uh, been working with already. Uh, we got customer relationships obviously with uh, Rio Tinto, South 32. Um, so in terms of customer base, that's uh, a perfect fit. Um, and coming to the products, obviously the key idea is uh, to strengthen the positioning as a one-stop shop supplier. Um, we want to combine the uh, well sophisticated water membrane-based water treatment equipment, which DMA manufactures in Queensland, uh, with the chemicals uh, which the customers uh, require pretty much at the same time. Um, um, that's uh, um, obviously the the key idea, uh, the cross-selling uh, synergies uh, between the the different uh, product portfolios. Um, um, behind this acquisition. Um, and then lastly, as mentioned, it's a perfect fit in, in terms of geography. Um, the, the acquisition in the meantime is legally completed. We've just announced this uh, this morning. So we've uh, signed definitive agreements and the agreements are now formally in, in effect. Uh, and as of 1st April, CAPIC is part of DMEM Group. Um, uh, we've acquired CAPIC for uh, a total of about $5 million, some base consideration uh, of $3.4 million in cash plus $1 million in, in shares valued at the average over the last 30 days prior to the announcement of the transaction. Uh, we think it's a very reasonable uh, multiples. It's a reasonable valuation of about 1.3 times revenues. Uh, in particular, as CAPIC comes with uh, well, a stable revenue base of about $3.3 million on average uh, over the, the past few years, um, and an EBITDA of $600,000. It's a very profitable, com profitable company. Um, they supply uh, specialty chemicals, which include things like uh, anti-scalin, scale inhibitors, uh, process additives, uh, a whole range of cooling tower water treatment products. It's indeed specialty chemicals products, which typically come with a high margin, um, which is reflected in this uh, pretty decent EBITDA and EBITDA margin uh, of somewhere close to 20% uh, that CAPIC has generated prior to the acquisition. On the next slide, I want to talk a little bit further about the synergies uh, behind that acquisition, the motivation to, to acquire CAPIC. Um, um, and as I mentioned, the key point here is about the cross-selling. Um, uh, I just uh, want to explain that in a bit more detail because there is a very natural combination. Uh, it's a very natural synergy uh, because DMEMS are water treatment systems and CAPIC's water treatment chemicals. Um, um, and the best to do that is to relate to a couple of examples. Um, and so for those of you which followed uh, DMEM products, uh, or you also may just uh, remember the, the picture that I've just shown at the beginning of that presentation, uh, you've seen the uh, equipment that DMEM supplies, which incorporates, which includes membranes um, as the, the filter, as the key component. Um, so CAPIC uh, manufactures and supplies chemicals which are required for the ongoing operations of these systems. Um, that's chemicals like uh, membrane cleaners, some um, uh, uh, anti-scalants, which are used to clean the, the surface of the membranes to prevent fouling on the membrane surface to, to happen, uh, which makes sure that the, the lifetime of these membranes are optimized. Um, 
Um, Anti-scalants are generally used uh, within the piping systems uh, in, in these systems uh, to prevent scale from depositing uh, in, in the pipes, um, which obviously has a negative impact on the efficiency of, of these systems. Um, um, and so it's, it's very normal um, and to some extent, uh, to a smaller extent, we've already been selling uh, these, these products, uh, it's very normal that after supply of a water treatment plant, customers come back to DMEM um, and ask uh, for the supply of these chemicals, which are required for the ongoing operations of, of the plants. Um, um, that's the, the one example. Another example is around cooling tower water treatment. Um, so we are looking at larger industrial cooling tower systems. Um, uh, we have just supplied a smaller system like that uh, for a, a customer to a customer in Queensland. Uh, that's like a $200,000 project, which we don't uh, have to announce to the ASX as it's uh, below the materiality threshold. Uh, but this is a, a pretty typical product for us. This uh, filtration system uh, that cleans water, purifies water before it's injected into the cooling tower circuit. Um, um, so you require filtration, but for the circulation of the water within the cooling towers, uh, it, is a, it is a formal regulatory requirement um, that, um, um, that chemicals are injected to prevent bacteria from, from growing, or also uh, for uh, anti-scalant uh, to prevent uh, scale from depositing. Uh, so once again, uh, there is a very natural synergy in between uh, supply of systems and the supply of the chemicals for ongoing operations uh, of the, the cooling towers. Um, so that's obviously the, the motivation uh, behind that, uh, uh, behind that, that combination. Um, so we've tried to quantify this. Um, um, we've looked at the, uh, the average, well, well, size of uh, the larger orders uh, which we've receive, received, which we've publicized to the ASX over the past year. Um, this is uh, summarized on this uh, one slide I'm looking at here now in, in our presentation. Uh, that's about uh, $800,000 relating to the, the bottom left now of uh, this slide. Uh, which is kind of a, an, an average uh, size for water treatment equipment sales at DMEM. And uh, obviously multiplying that with cap CapEx customer base, this gives us like a very, very significant cross-selling potential uh, through this acquisition. And I'm not saying that we will uh, be able to sell our products into all these customers, uh, but if we see like a, a take up rate of 10 or 20% only uh, over the next couple of years, um, uh, there will be a, a very substantial uh, cross-selling potential by bringing uh, DMAM equipment into the CAPIC customer base. Um, and the other way around, we've tried to uh, uh, calculate like an average contract value for uh, uh, CAPIC products among DMAM customers as well. Um, which uh, translates into another very substantial cross-selling opportunity the other way around from CAPIC into DMAM. And so this obviously, that's the key consideration. Uh, lastly, with CAPIC, we've completed that national footprint. We are now uh, across all the key locations in Australia. We are now able to supply and support customers in all these uh, key locations and believe we're well on track uh, to um, achieve that vision of becoming the, the national champion in Australia um, in, 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 in uh, um, decentralized water and, and wastewater treatment. This takes me pretty much to the end of my presentation. Uh, maybe a, a final word. Uh, obviously, to, to fund that acquisition, we have announced, uh, we have completed a $9 million placement. Um, this was all announced to the ASX uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we uh, are still in the final days of a share purchase plan uh, to existing shareholders. And this pretty much takes me to the end, uh, Mark, and I'm happy to take questions.
Okay, great, Jeff. You can just leave it on that slide there, Andreas, so people can note down the uh, investor contact uh, details and George's details as well. Um, again, uh, a bit like a bit like James, we've got a few questions that came in ahead of time, but I would just want to take one quickly from the audience. Um, the chemicals used, are they imported? Um, are they produced here locally in Australia? Uh, the chemicals are manufactured in Perth, so it's 100% uh, Australian manufacturing. Um, it's specialty chemicals, so we are not looking at cheap bulk supply from overseas. Uh, it's indeed well-developed formulations, uh, which have been developed, which have been adjusted over the years, um, um, depending on the particular application, but it's all 100% manufactured in, in Perth. Capic has a, a decent sized manufacturing site. Uh, Capic has recently invested into the manufacturing equipment uh, and the manufacturing capacity uh, that Capic has as of today, it's good for a very substantial scale up in revenues. Very great. And then uh, two that came in ahead of time, I'll just go through the first one. Um, who would be your largest customer if you can say by 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 revenue well by revenue the largest customers um that's uh, uh the mining customers from the queensland side uh that uh can be found in our investor presentation um so the uh attractive thing uh, about the dmam business model with the uh um, decentralized containerized water treatment plants is uh, that we don't depend on single projects. Um, um, if you look at larger companies which do centralized urban water treatment plants, uh, then you would find that many of those companies depend on one or two larger project awards per year. Uh, our revenue stream is a lot more diversified. Um, uh, the biggest customers, the biggest customer, the one biggest customer maybe accounts for about 15 uh, or 20 percent of revenues at max. Uh, but this would then split up on different projects and service contracts uh, over the year. Okay, great. And then another another question I got in ahead of time. Um, obviously, there's been a step change in margins um, since you've been listed. Um, do you expect it, you know that kind of thirty percent to be the or was it thirty one percent? I can't remember from the slide now. Is that the the kind of new base for? How, how we should think about margins? Yeah, the, the margins have grown, as you were saying, Mark, over the years, along with the growing volumes, which is a very natural development. Um, our margins are already with a 31% uh, in the past year, uh, relatively high, which reflects that positioning in the, uh, the water treatment uh, industry, uh, positioning uh, towards membrane-based applications, high value add applications, uh, which are typically uh, a little bit uh, better paid uh, compared to other um, more, more bulk type applications. Um, um, the, the margin growth uh, that might continue uh, by, by a little bit, um, there is larger, there is a couple of larger listed companies uh, focusing on water treatment applications, uh, which you can find on, on the stock exchange. Um, which are maybe a little bit similar to DMEM as they have their own products and technologies. Uh, for companies like that, uh, you can see well margins uh, of about 35%. I'm um, looking at the, the gross margins. Um, uh, so with the growing volumes um, and uh, um, the, the positioning of DMEM um, also towards the service sector uh, over the next few years, uh, that's where, where the numbers could converge. And then another one from the audience. Um, you know, where do you see DMEM in five years? I think they're kind of maybe asking, you know, now you've got the national footprint. Is it just, you know, filling the, the customer funnel with, you know, um, customers that you can give a, you know, a national service no matter where, where they're operating? Or is there still, you know, one or two acquisitions in terms of products or, um regions that you you might want to expand into well in australia we're now quite well positioned with uh, with the western australia acquisition um, um so i think we're, we're in a good spot there um obviously we now are, are looking uh, looking at the australian market 
uh, focusing on the organic growth opportunities. Um, uh, and the idea was always to extrapolate uh, like a, a 15 uh, or something like that uh, market share, 15% market share in Queensland uh, to the rest of the, the country. Um, so that's, uh, as a nutshell, the, the longer term objective. Um, um, then, uh, obviously, with uh, positioning in Australia strengthening, with BMEM growing uh, in, into a good and, and solid brand also, uh, then the internationalization will become uh, uh, more of a topic for us. Um, uh, there is strong opportunities for us in the New Zealand market, um, which has a pretty similar economic structure compared to Tasmania, uh, where we're already quite uh, in, in, a, in a good position in terms of market share. Um, uh, but then obviously through Singapore, through the Singapore side, we've already done uh, a number of projects in Southeast Asia. Uh, we got a subsidiary in, in Germany already through which we can cover the, the European market. Um, that's kind of the target geographies uh, for the, let's say, more medium term future. And then a, a question for me then would be, um... As we look into kind of 2021, the, the next year, in terms of revenue breakdown by segment, can you give a rough idea of, you know, what you expect to come from, you know, the specialist chemicals business, what you expect to come from, like, you know, the pumps business, and then, you know, what's going to come from, I guess, the core um, systems business? Yeah, so what we communicated to the ASX, Mark, uh, that's the 10 million uh, recurring revenue stream uh, from the past year. Uh, that's obviously carried forward into the new year as a, as a solid basis. Uh, that roughly splits up, splits up into uh, um, um, something like 4 million from service contracts, uh, 3 million from chemicals, and uh, 3 million from pumps and hydraulics. Um, uh, that gives you the total of 10. Um, obviously, we expect to see uh, uh, some growth on, on this uh, plus CAPIC, uh, which comes on top of that with a stable uh, recurring uh, revenue streams from chemical sales, uh, which is another 3.3 million, as I just mentioned during the presentation. Um, uh, so that gives you a rough breakdown of these uh, recurring revenue components. Okay, great. So it's pretty balanced between the, the three divisions, if we, if we can call them that. It's, it's pretty balanced. Obviously, the service contracts that's uh, contracted over the longer term, uh, but sales of pumps, pump maintenance, pump services, servicing, um, and uh, the supply of water treatment chemicals are also very, very stable in nature. And uh, obviously, uh, the idea is now, as I mentioned, about the cross-selling uh, opportunities to grow that revenue stream further in, into the future. Okay, and uh, just on the geographic one, I noticed you don't have a presence in New South Wales. Are they kind of, is that market serviced by Brisbane on one side and, and the Melbourne office on the other side? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so the northern part of New South Wales, we can easily service from the Brisbane side. Um, and we've done a number of projects in northern New South Wales in the past. Um, uh, and the southern part of the state were supporting from the other locations. Okay, great. Okay, Andres, um, yeah, the audio is much improved. Um, so I think it might've been an issue on, uh, on James's side. If we don't have any further questions, I know we're pushing up on, on 10 a.m. and uh, you did start a, a few minutes early, thank you. Uh, have we got any more? No, it doesn't look like it. Andreas, thank you so much for, for coming back on and giving us a, an update on the DMEM story. Um, it was good to good to get an update. And as I said, yeah, the, the video of this morning's recording will either be on the YouTube channel later today, or if not given the, the long weekend, it'll be up on Tuesday morning. So just uh, check in on the YouTube channel if anybody wants to watch it back. Uh, I wish everybody a, a, an enjoyable long weekend and um, I'll be in touch about the next morning meeting uh, in the coming days. Okay, thank you.